Hey everybody, it's Annie and I'm super excited because I'm taking you on an end of the year tour of the planner that I have really used this entire year. So I have switched my cover once or twice. I go between this one, which is the Spice Pepper with black stitching and black elastic. Um, I started the year with this and I also own a denim. I used that for a few months, I think in like February, March, April, that kind of time frame, and then I switched back to this and I plan on staying in this until about January when I think I'll be switching again to the denim. This is the number six if you're going for a Foxy Fix size. It's also called the Standard or sometimes the Narrow. I absolutely love it. This is my planner piece. Um, I get asked a lot why I have this size, why I like this size, why I don't try other sizes anymore, things like that, um, because it's a curious thing and we love to have the answers to these questions as planner people. Um, the reason I love this size is because when I hold it this way, it feels like a personal rings size, which is very compact and easy to take with you. And yet when you open this up and you look at the paper size, it is taller than a personal and so I really feel like I'm getting the real estate of like an A5 size. No, it's not exact dimensions, but um, that's how I just kind of describe it. It feels uh, as portable as a personal, but like I'm getting the space of an A5 without all that bulk. So that is what has kind of made this planner piece for me. Let me open it up and give you a quick tour. I can't believe we are in the third quarter or excuse me, the fourth quarter of the year 2019. I mean, can you believe it? So here's what I've got going on. Here's what I've been doing. My system is still going strong. I do have four books from Designs by Planner Perfect in here. And the first one is a notebook. This is blank. It has no, I don't know, like prompts or designs or goal pages or anything like that. And it's also unlined. So I get the blank and unlined. And this is kind of my inbox, brain dump, notes, anything goes book. Usually it's short term notes when I'm brainstorming something. Uh, this is social media related stuff, just different ideas and things I'm thinking about and planning and working on. I do like to use washi tape. Um, if I have multiple pages, like all of this is still the social media stuff, I will continue the same washi tape through that whole like theme. And then when I move on to the next thing, like this is just notes if I'm watching a Skillshare video or something on YouTube where I got some information that I wanna write down, this is just notes. Um, so I switch washi tape between kind of sections or themes or notes. Here were just some random homeschool notes that I had. There's a blank page because I was thinking I was gonna continue on. I haven't yet, but I still might. Here, new washi, new theme. So this is me planning out the remainder of a class I'm teaching. I'm teaching preschool at our homeschool group. So I do that once a week. New theme, new washi. These are some pages I'm already plotting out some thoughts I've had for 2020 and things that I want in my planner. This is why I love having a blank notebook for things like this because I can list, journal, write, or I can doodle. And here I'm actually plotting out uh, a form or, or a section that I want in my 2020 planner and I want it to be uh, kind of permanent and, and be there that I reference. So that's kind of cool. And then the rest of this is blank. So I've noticed that one of these notebooks lasts me anywhere from three to six months. So that I think this is my third one in 2019. And I do replace these when they get full. So this is a lot more um, brain dump, inbox, note taking. None of this is permanent. If it's something I decide I wanna reference later or have a permanent spot in my planner, it gets migrated into another section. So that way by the time this is full, I can get rid of it, bring in a new one, and then I can constantly and always have a place to just jot something down without worrying where it is or finding it. So that is how I succeed functionally in a traveler's notebook. The next book I have is always a monthly plan book. So this is where my weekly and my daily planning goes. So we're in October. 
Um, this kind of book has a monthly overview. I use this to track various things. Like right now it's tracking my workouts. Oh, I forgot to check some stuff off. I really need to update this. This is almost like a tracker for me. Um, it also tracks a certain kinds of foods that I eat and what videos are coming up this month that I need to film or I've already planned. Here are my goals pages and I have uh, food goals, fitness goals, school goals, and other goals. That's what I love about these plan books is every month you can focus on different things. It also has this week on two pages, which I love. And then after it are daily pages. So I use the daily pages for dailies as well as a variety of other kinds of things. And if you're curious about exactly how I use these, you should check out my playlist and my videos that are called midweek planner flips. I have done like 10 of these by the time I'm filming this video and I show you the previous week that is fully complete in my planner and then I show you the current week that is partially filled in. So I always film these on a Wednesday and you can see my planner in use. But it's just a mixture of checklists, to-do lists, um, tracking things, journaling, and keeping track of what's going on for any given day. So I'm only ever um, planned as far as the current week that I'm on. So here you can see this is next week and I have not planned anything for that. And we also have another week after that in October, and then this book is done, and I will put in the November book. So that's how I'm doing kind of like my daily, my real functioning um, spreads. Uh, one question I get asked a lot is, how does it work with a traveler's notebook where you know, if you're in the front, there's a lot right here and this is real low, you know, how do you write? Well, one thing I do is my frequently traffic, trafficked areas, the places I write the most, I put in the middle of my book. So when I'm writing, I have it a much more flat, even surface. It's not exact, but it's closer. So that's one thing that I do. Um, so I hope that answers that question a little bit. And then if I'm not using uh, or writing in a book as often, it goes towards the back. So this next book is a 12 month book from Planner Perfect. So I have tabbed off the months from, uh, with these little tabbies from Planner Press, I believe. So January, February, March, all the way to October. The reason that I have these tabbed is because back behind the month, are note pages. So I have spent the entirety of this year really like honing in and perfecting what I wanna put on these note pages and I'm almost there. I need to tweak this one a little bit but this I wanna keep the same for the rest of this year plus into next year. This is um, my grocery budget and my miscellaneous budget that I keep track of. Uh, we get paid like twice a month I shop four times a month, so I have to divide each paycheck up in half and things like that, so I have to keep track. And I like to come in here and know how much money I have to work with so I don't go over budget. Here, um, this month I decided to put recipes that are our favorite, so it's less thinking when I menu plan. And a couple of them I had found to try, and look, I wrote notes. This one was really good, this one was okay. This is my most used like section of this. This is where I plan what I'm going to film and I keep track of videos. Have I filmed them? Have I edited them? Are they uploaded onto YouTube? All this kind of stuff, especially if you're doing collaborations. Sometimes you need to email uh, your video to them. They approve it or they wanna check it out. Um, sometimes you have a coupon code, all kinds of things like that. So I'm really utilizing um, the notes pages and that's especially why I have this tabbed off. So anyways, this goes to December, oops. And yeah, I need to be getting a new one of these soon. I mean, isn't it crazy? We're at the point of the year where you need to, like there are some things that you're already planning for January. I mean, I can't hardly even believe it. So I should probably get online later and order, <laughs> order next month's book or next year's book, especially because it's difficult. You have to pick a, a design, a cover that you're going to enjoy for the whole year. I did a good job. I have not been um, sad, you know, or like this has not gotten, uh, oh my goodness, words are hard today. Like I haven't gotten bored of this cover. 
Okay, this is another book that actually has been in my planner all year long and I need to soon find another one for next year with a cover that I love because this is my permanent lists book. So this is a reference section, a list section. I keep things in here. This has been in here all year long. I've loved how it's functioned and I'm going to create this again in my my updated 2020 setup. And again, we're getting that close. I should I should be considering it. So the first section I have is all of my kids. So each of my kids has a page and this is an ongoing checklist I've referenced all year long. If we need clothes for my kids or shoes, I write it down what we need. And then I have kept notes. Oh, I can cross this off. Um, but I kept notes back in like March or June, March, April, May, June, somewhere in there when we were swapping all of the winter clothes for summer clothes, what we had in storage. And I actually just this week swapped again. So all of the summer stuff went into storage and all of the winter stuff came out and I referenced this and this was helpful. And then I have notes like my one daughter has lots of shorts and play shirts and lots of summer dresses. So she probably won't need anything next year because she has a lot of stuff. So I have those for all of my kids. Um, this is my daughter's is shoe sizes and there's my last kid. Here's one for me. Same thing. I put away some of my summer stuff. This is what I have. I have three to four summer skirts available to me. So I just, I don't wanna buy things I don't need and I also wanna be able to find everything come the next season. So here is a list of essential oils that I have tried, wanna try, like to have, have researched, things like that. Uh, again, kind of a permanent list I use. This is Trim Healthy Mama meals and snack ideas. It's just a healthy way of eating and I like to keep lists so here's some more dinners. These are not necessarily Trim Healthy Mama, but these are some of our favorites and I have room to continue on. Fourth of July obviously has come and gone, but I started a list way early in the season before even July and some of the things we wanted to do and some of the things we ended up doing. So it was really cool to just kind of have this for the holidays, the main holidays um, that we celebrated. And we still have Thanksgiving coming up. That's coming up very soon. Um, I actually need to start filling this in a little bit more because um, this year we are driving to my family to celebrate with my side and we are also celebrating Christmas at the same time, so I have notes about that. And I also have already gotten some notes on Christmas gift ideas for the nieces and nephews, as well as um, meals and different things going on. So I need to fill some of that in uh, and keep this updated. And then of course Christmas, uh, it's so close. I'm gonna be needing this uh, until I get my, I am going to get a plan book and Jenny is going to release some soon, I hope, of just one book for Christmas. So I'm gonna use it as not only planning, but memory keeping for December as well. And I have no idea where I'm gonna put it. Maybe I'll take this one out, temporarily have the Christmas book back here, and then when I get to the new year, you know, I'll have my new setup and my new blank one like this available. So maybe that's what I'll do. Here, just some notes. I love me my sticky notes. This was sort of like um, prepping to be able to write these cleaning checklists. So home management, these are daily things, weekly things I like to do, and monthly things. So I refer to this every once in a while to be like, hmm, how long has it been since I've done something? But I don't actually like use this as a checklist, it's just a reference. And then I usually write these things in my monthly plan book, so like my days and my weeks. Homeschool stuff, I always have permanent lists, um, things my kids are taking for classes, uh, things I have prepared, things I need to prepare, books I've purchased, books I've heard of, <laughs> um, different things that we can memorize. So just homeschool. Oops, that was an address, not mine. Let's see. Oh, these are daily, kind of like a routine. This was more summer. So this was my summer schedule. On Mondays, I babysat. On Wednesday, Wednesdays, I babysat. Um, Friday is my husband's day off, things like that. So I kind of had this like theme for the day. Sometimes we did it, sometimes we didn't. And it was just really nice to have this and to just mentally kind of plan it if we could. And then, like I said, this was like a, a schedule, but we're, we're not in that anymore. So I need a new one. Planner routine, things that, to think about uh, on a weekly or monthly basis. 
uh, long-term projects, two-page spread. Actually, I need to update that because we did purge the Tupperware and we purged the shoes just this week. Um, yeah. Household wish list, things that I'm always on the lookout for that I've thought, oh, this would be nice to have. What else is in here? I know there's a couple more things. I think there's a couple more things. Oh, I don't have my red aspen nails on right now because I'm in between nails, but it's so much quicker to know what numbers go on what fingers. And then these are like generic nails that I used to get from the store. So I reference this when I put my new nails on. Oh, there's like a bug flying around. And then last but not least, if you saw my Christmas planning in July, yes, I do start thinking about Christmas at least by July. Um, this is my gift ideas section. So this works for birthdays as well, but I keep um, usually more like themes. So like my oldest son, he loves bugs, he loves science. So anytime um, I'm getting ready to buy gifts, I'm like, oh gee, what do I wanna get him? This gets the juices going and I can kind of think of things to get. Sticky notes, I always keep, this is not an activated card. This is um, just like a washi cutter, stamps, stickers, samplers, blah, 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 papers. I love the standard size. This is another reason I love the standard size because if you take a full sheet of paper and you fold it, it's the same, the width is the same as the height of the standard size. So you can fold papers. You could take um, papers and fold them in half. like this and tuck them in the back pocket. That's not a great example because that was a thick <laughs> stack of papers. Um, but there, you get the idea. So I would say most of the year I actually used a fountain pen. Are any of my fountain pens close? Let me see right here. Okay. So I have this yellow one. I also have a light pink one. These are the Lamy Safari pens. I've gotten them from Jet Pens before um, and I just refill them myself. It's actually super easy and cost effective and way simpler than I thought um, than just buying like the little ink cartridges. But for some reason this week I picked up a Paper Mate Flare pen and I remembered why I absolutely love these pens. And so this week I'm using a Paper Mate Flare. Who knows how long that's going to last, but I love it. And mild liners are always my favorite. I have been using this gray mild liner almost every single day for the entire year. So they hold a pretty decent amount of ink. I'm really happy with that. And honestly, when this one goes, rather than just picking another one from my stash, I'll probably order another gray rather than do a different color. Cause I just feel like no matter what washi tape I use, no matter what spread I'm in, no, no matter if it's my daily planning or my notes pages, this is a neutral color and it does what I need it to, but it also doesn't like freak me out and make me crazy with like clashing or, or being weird colors. So love that, love that. And yeah, that is my planner. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to put them in the comment section and I'll either answer you directly in the comments or if I get some uh, like a repeat of a similar question then I'll just put together a follow-up video but I have been so happy and I've really been consistent and this has been my planner for the entire year and my my setup even if I tweak things a little bit or use pretty things or not pretty things like my actual system has been completely the same and in that way I'm definitely going to keep it the same for 2020. So have you been in the same planner all year long? Are you switching around? Have you found your planner piece? What have you learned about different planners? What works for you? What doesn't work for you? I would love to start a conversation about this in the comment section. So please leave a comment, like this video if you enjoyed it, and please be a subscriber. Don't just come in once or twice, but subscribe. See what I have to offer all year round for planner-related videos, and I will see you next time. Bye.